Hear now the word of the Lord, as it's written in the Gospel of John in chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. And this is a story that comes right after the disciples are eating with the Lord and doing the, the first uh, Holy Supper. And towards the end, uh, the Lord is letting them know that he is going to be leaving and that they aren't going to see him for a while, but that it's going to be okay. And that's the context of starting into chapter 14, saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Amen. So reading from the Heavenly Doctrine for the New Church in the work Heavenly Secrets or Arcana Celestia. This is from uh, number 1320, oh, sorry, incorrect number, 3708. Speaking about coming out of a state of obscurity. So imagine yourself just being in a place where you aren't sure what to do. And this is saying that there are two paths that go out of that state. Out of this obscurity in which the natural person dwells, either truth can arise or falsity can do so. When anyone allows himself to be enlightened by means of the word from the Lord, his obscurity is turned into brightness. For the internal path is opened, and so influx and communication from the Lord by way of heaven takes place. But when he does not allow himself to be enlightened by means of the word from the Lord, but instead by his own intelligence, his obscurity is turned into darkness and so into falsity, for then the internal path is closed, and no influx or communication from the Lord by way of heaven takes place, apart from such as enables him to be seen outwardly to be human by others, when he thinks and so speaks from evil and falsity. This is why, in the Lord's word, the north means truth with those who allow themselves to be enlightened, whereas it means falsity with those who do not. The former come up from obscurity, that is, they are raised up into light, but the latter go down from obscurity, that is, they remove themselves from the light. Here end our lessons. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. May the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So, the disciples are talking to the Lord, and he starts talking about his father. And, you know, naturally speaking, they probably would be thinking Joseph, but they know he's talking about a different father, right? I want to start off this talk by thinking a little bit about this word father in the word, and what does it really mean? What does it mean to come to the Father, because we're talking about the Lord being the way, the truth, and the life, and when he describes what that way is leading to, the answer is, nobody comes to the Father except through me. So doesn't that mean that the, the destination is the Father in this circumstance, right? That's where people are trying to go. If he's responding to him, well, we don't know the way, and he's saying, well, nobody comes to the Father except through me. He's saying, that's the destination. That seems kind of strange. What is the Father in this circumstance? Interestingly, in the Old Testament, there's uh, Abraham is one of the earlier guys that we meet, and at the end of his life, and at the end of a lot of people's lives in the Word, we hear that they are gathered to their fathers. Hmm. and to their peoples. And this is an expression in the word that's taken from the most ancient people that assumed that the fathers that had passed on before went to heaven because they were good. So if we're being gathered to our fathers, to the Father, it's talking about heaven. More specifically, it's talking about the type of goodness that we find in heaven. So where are we going? What's the way? We're, we're going to heaven. That's the goal. And what is heaven? It's the place where we feel goodness. Where I, Alan, feel goodness that I would say, yeah, this is really good. And each of you might have slightly different forms of goodness, right? We're not all exactly the same. So... <laughs> Thinking about this a little bit, I was thinking about, well, my, my own father. Well, if I'm going to be gathered to my father, I want to set this up in terms of, I used to be a truck driver, and my dad was a truck driver. There's kind of an interesting connection. When I was a truck driver, I could be just about anywhere in the country, and if I didn't know where I was, I could call my dad, literally. And I, and I could say, I'm somewhere in North Carolina, I got off this highway, I can't even see a road sign, and he could be like, oh, is there any stores around? He could identify where we were at from the stores that I could point out. Like, it's insanely amazing how good his memory is for this country. Now, I could rely on that, and it always would work. But would it be good for me to just keep calling my dad every time and getting directions? No. No. It would probably annoy him. He's got other work to do. Every once in a while, when I'm really lost, that's a great time to call Dad and say, I don't know where I'm at. Please help me out. But wouldn't it be better if I came to know the country just as well? That not just that I have a father who can tell me what to do or how to get where I want to go or what the way is, but that I can come to know the way. So when I was a truck driver, in the evenings, there's not a whole lot to do. You don't have any of your friends around. You're by yourself in a truck. You can watch TV. You can read books. You can go find some things to do wherever you're at if there is something to do. But most of the time, I'd sit there and study my road atlas. That was a majority of the time that I wasn't driving I, and I was still awake, was study my road atlas. And wouldn't you know... No matter where I'm at in the country, I could probably take about 15 different routes to get somewhere else in this country. There are so many ways to get from point A to point B. And yes, my dad would pretty much always have an answer. Is it the right answer? It could be. It could get me to the destination. But maybe I want to take a trip. I've never gone through Bismarck. And one of the routes could take me through Bismarck. So I could change that route. Fun pop quiz here now for everybody. If you 
We're sitting on the north shore of Lake, I'm going to uh, see if I can pronounce this name correctly, Sakakawea. Anybody know where this is? You're on the north shore of Lake Sakakawea, and you need to go to California. Where do you go? Which way do you turn? Anybody want to guess? There are some things here that you might be able to figure out, even if you don't know where Lake Sakakawea is. Where's California? Uh, almost, if you went to somebody and said, hey, I'm on the north shore of Lake Sakakawea, I could call my dad and say, I need to get to California. And he would go, well, just really take any road west, and then you'll have to go south eventually. There's a problem with this, though. And I don't think anybody of us will notice the problem until I tell you. Because the problem is, is that there are multiple Californias. Which California? California the state or California, Maryland? Because they go in very different directions. What's the way to get there? The roads, right? And are we traveling in the right direction? When we ask for very specific things from the Lord, sometimes what we're asking for isn't something he can offer us. Because what we're asking for is something that will lead us towards a bad end, not towards the heavenly one. Or it might lead towards us understanding something falsely instead of truthfully. So should the Lord give us our answer? Or should he hope and press for us to ask the right questions? Where is your heaven? How do you get from where you are at today, on the north shore of Lake Sakakawea, wherever that is in the world, there is a path between you and your heaven. But to get there, we only have one path. It can go lots of different ways, but it's only through the Lord, is what he's saying. The way is through the Lord. And, and really, this isn't a, a directional question in terms of which road to get on. That's going to be next week. But what is our motivation? Is our motivation to get to heaven for my own happiness? Because I want to be happy. That makes sense. We all want to be happy. And if we go to the Lord and say, I want to be happy. Show me how I can be happy. The Lord can... Say, open your word and read. And that can be the same answer over and over for the rest of our lives until we do. And it's the right answer. It won't give us the answer we want because, well, reading the word doesn't feel happy at the moment. Maybe it will later on in life. But at first, that's not the answer we want. I want, when I go to the Lord's word, I want the answer to just randomly, I'm going to open a page. And have you ever done that? Flip through your Bible and just go, there, this is going to be my answer, and hope. What is the way? The Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm going to read a portion of this number from the New Jerusalem and its heavenly doctrine, number 276. And thinking about this in terms of if we're trying to follow the Lord's way and knowing that it's not a specific thing that we're looking for, what is it that we are looking for? And, and I'm going to give a hint that it's your motive. This number says that the providence that the Lord has, or it says providence, this is in our pamphlet, is the name for the Lord's governance in the heavens and on earth. Since all the goodness that comes from love and all the truth that leads to faith, the things that are required for our salvation, come from him, and none whatever comes from us. We can see that the Lord's divine providence is involved in absolutely everything that contributes to salvation, to the salvation of the human race. Just as the Lord teaches in John, saying, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hmm. So what is the Lord trying to get at with this statement? If the Lord's providence is everything that contributes to our salvation, and salvation is what heaven is, that's where we're trying to go, that's the destination, the way to get there is the Lord. If I'm asking particular questions to the Lord to get specific answers, am I going to find the Lord's way? Or am I only going to look for my answers? The Lord's way is the love for Him, our willingness to follow His commandments, and our love for other people. This is the way. It means that no matter what city we might want to go to, whether it's California, Maryland, or Sacramento, California, the method that we, the, 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 how we get there is by loving other people. We get to heaven, no matter what heaven it is, that final destination that's your personal house in heaven, because the Lord says, in my house there are many mansions. In my Father's house there are many mansions. To get from where you're at to there, it's not about knowing the specific things at this time that I have to do and knowing the right answer. Do you have love in your hearts? For the Lord, for His Word, and for other people. And this is what the Lord tells His disciples. Where did I put my Bible? Here it is. This is what the Lord tells His disciples here. When they're doubting, because, of course, if you're going to have doubt in a story, you need Thomas to come be doubting Thomas. And he comes and he says, wait, we don't even know where you're going. If we don't know where you're going, how do we know the way? And then Philip comes along and he says, can you at least show us the Father? There's these parts of us that doubt, that, that look for something else, that wants different answers than the ones that we're seeking, which the way is love. Loving the Lord, loving the neighbor. So when they're asking this, this is his confirmation to them. Do you not believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else... Believe me for the sake of the works themselves. I know this can sound confusing because what's up with all this father-son stuff? But let's keep that idea of father being the goodness that we are seeking, that the Lord has prepared for us. It's our place in heaven. That goodness is described in the Lord's word. That father is in it. The truths that we read will all help us to find that goodness if we're willing to seek it. Now, interestingly, he says, if you can't believe that these pages tell you what real love is, how to love the Lord, how to obey his commandments, and how to love other people, if you don't believe that, try it and see what the works tell you. Saying, we probably all get to sit there and go, really, this teaches us how to love? And yet there's these stories in here of people hurting people and people killing people and swindling them. There's a lot of bad stuff. This is how to love? Saying, put some of these teachings into your life. Apply them with that willingness to try to love the Lord, other people. This is the way. When we see those works, then we will know that goodness. Well, it could be that we do a work that is not correct, and then we find out that didn't lead to goodness. I better make a U-turn. Went the wrong way. I thought I was going to California, Maryland. I was heading west. We need to make a U-turn sometimes when we find out we're going the wrong way. But what the way is, is our heart. Is our heart set on things for ourselves, 
Or is it set on things for other people? The Lord is the way, and he is the one that inspires those loves within us. Next week, we're going to get into the more nitty-gritty stuff. Because if we have that motivation, it doesn't mean that it's just going to work all the time. Like I said, we can make mistakes trying to love people and doing it in very wrong ways. So it's not only that the Lord is the way, meaning he can inspire those loves within us, but he's also going to be every specific direction along the way. He'll be the one that picks us back up when we fall down. He'll be the one that points us in the right direction. And I'm not just saying this kind of metaphorically in our minds. What if this whole universe, this whole world, was working in cooperation with the Lord? Because he created it. What if the things around us are supposed to also kind of capture the ideas from the Lord that come down through heaven into our minds through the word, that those are caught in our world, and that he can use our environment, the people around us, the friendships that we have, the ones that we can trust to tell us, yeah, I know you're lost right now, but I can promise you this is the right one today. that when we run into a roadblock, it's not, oh, the Lord's getting in my way, but maybe he's redirecting us. This is such a, a marvelous thing about how the divine providence works, and I want to reread this passage in our pamphlet here, saying that the providence of the Lord, it's the name of his governance in the heavens and on earth. Since all the goodness that comes from love and all the truth that leads to faith the things that are required for our salvation come from him and none whatsoever comes from ourselves. We can then see that the Lord's divine providence is involved in absolutely everything that contributes to our salvation or the salvation of the human race. This is pretty cool. If we realize what this is saying, that really, if we work on our motivation, really work on wanting to love other people, at least being obedient, then reading this and experiencing life with open eyes to try to find the Lord's path, that next, what, what is the truth then? From that motivation, I can take this and go out into my world, and the Lord will show us the way. In fact, everything that we go through is a means contributing to that end. The Lord tells us in his work, Divine Providence, that every single detail of our lives is within his control. Every single detail of anything is within the divine providence. Even those things that are permitted for the sake of freedom, the Lord can bend them towards what is good. When the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, nobody comes to the Father except through me, he's trying to remind us that it's not about some specific idea that's going to get there, or some specific church that's going to be right, or some specific person that's going to have the right answers for us, but that if we get our heart set on the right way, he can lead us in any way he wishes, and that's always going to be towards heaven. I'm going to close <clears throat> reading a quote from the Lord in the work Isaiah. Chapter 43, verse 19. Where it says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. No matter where we're at in our states of obscurity or confusion, how to live to go to heaven eventually, the Lord's there with us. And he's saying, keep your eyes open. I am doing a new thing. I am making a highway in the desert. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat>